Hello to my fellow students who are watching this video and hello to Mr. Gravy, De La Cruz, my instructor. For uh, this video, we will talk about the skin and its structures, the different bones of the skeletal system and the major muscles of the human body. Uh, let, let's identify the skin and structures first. Uh, what is the skin? The skin is one of the largest organs in the body in surface area and weight. Uh, the skin consists of two layers, the epidermis and the dermis. And beneath the dermis lies the hypodermis or the subcontinuous fatty, fatty tissue. So the skin has three main functions. Uh, one is for protection, two regulation, and three is sensation. And now let's move on to the um, layers of the human skin. So what is epidermis? The epidermis is the thin outer layer of the skin that is visible to the eye and works to provide protection to the body. It does not contain any blood vessels and therefore dependent on the dermis, the layer of the skin underneath it, to provide access to nutrients and dispose of waste. So this layer is the epidermis. Uh, it works to provide protection to the body. What is the function of epidermis? All, la all layers of the skin, including the epidermis, are responsible for the protection of the body, including internal organs, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. Some roles of the epidermis include the production of new cells, production of melanin to give color to the skin and reduce the absorption and impact of ultraviolet radiation. And three is physical protection of the body. Four is for immune protection of the body. Second, what is dermis? The dermis is the second and thickest layer of the, of the three major layers of skin, located between the epidermis and subcontinuous tissues, or also known as the hypodermis. So as you can see, this is the epidermis, and this layer is the dermis, and the subcontinuous tissue or the hypodermis. So the dermis is the thickest layer of skin and arguably the most important. It plays uh, several uh, key roles, including pro producing sweat and regulating the body's temperature, Within the dermis are sweat glands that produce sweat that comes out of the pores. The body sweats as a way to cool itself off, regulate temperature, and flush out toxins. Second is producing oil. The subacuous glands produce sebum or oil. Sebum inhibits bacterial growth on the skin and conditions the hair and skin. If the follicle in which subacuous glands are located becomes clogged, with excess oil or dead skin, dead skin cells, a pimple develops. Third is distributing blood. Blood vessels are located in the dermis, which feeds the skin, removes toxins, and supply the epidermis with blood. Fourth is protecting the rest of the body. The dermis con contains phagocytes, which are cells that consume potentially harmful toxins and impurities, including bacteria. The dermis already protects the body, but the phagocytes provide an additional layer of protection from anything harmful that has penetrated the epidermis. And last is giving the skin a structure so it holds its shape. The dermal layer is responsible for the torpor of the skin, acting in a similar way as does the foundation of building. Last, what is uh, hypodermis? The hypodermis, or also called the subcontinuous layer or super 
superficial fascia is a layer directly below the dermis and serves to connect the skin to the underlying fascia or the fibrous tissue of the bones and muscles. It is not uh, strictly a part of the skin, although the border between the hypodermis and the dermis can be difficult to distinguish. So this is this layer is the hypodermis or subcontinuous um, fatty tissue. The hypodermis consists of well vascularized, loose, uh, areolar connective tissue, and adipose tissue, which functions as a mode of fat storage and provides insulation and cautioning for integument. So that's all the layers of the human skin. Now let's move on to the different bones of the skeletal system. There are five types of bones in the skeleton. The flat, long, uh, short, and irregular, and sesamoid. First, let's identify what are the flat bones that protect the internal organs. So there are flat bones in the skull, uh, occipital, parietal, frontal, nasal, lacrimal, and vomer, the thoracic cage, or the sternum and ribs, and the pelvis, or the ilium, ischium, and the pubis. The function of flat bones is to protect internal organs such as the brain, heart, and pelvic organs. organs. Flat bones are somewhat flattened and can provide protection like a shield. Uh, flat bones can also provide largest, um, large areas of attachments for muscles. So these are the flat bones that protect internal organs. Second is uh, the long bones that support uh, weight and facilitate movement. The long bones, longer, longer than they are wide, include the femur, the longest bone in the body. This is the femur. Okay, as well as relatively small bones in the fingers. Long bones function to support the weight of the body and facilitate movement. Long bones are mostly located in the appendicular skeleton and include bones in the lower limbs and bones in the upper limbs, or the humerus, the radius, the ulna or metacarpals, and phalanges. Okay, so number three is the short bones that are cube shaped. Uh, short bones are about as long as they are wide, located in the wrist and ankle joints. Short bones provide stability and some movement. The carpals in the wrist, this is the carpals, and the tarsals in the ankle share an uh, example of the short bones. Okay, so the carpals and the tarsals are those uh, example of short bones. Next is the irregular bones that have complex shapes. So regular bones uh, vary in shape and structure and therefore do not fit into any other category, flat, short, long, or sesamoid. They often have a fairly complex shape which helps protect internal organs. For example, the vertebral column protect the spinal cord. The regular bones of the pelvis or pubis, ilium, and ischium protect organs in the pelvic cavity. So this is vertebrae and the sacrum. Those are the regular bones. And last is the sesamoid bones 
the reinforced tendons. Sesamoid bones are bones embedded in tendons. The small round bones are commonly found in the tendons of the hand, knees, and feet. Sesamoid bones function to protect tendons from stress and wear. The patella, commonly referred to as the kneecap, is an example of sesamoid bone. So this is the patella. This is the example of the sesamoid bones. And now, let's move on to the major muscles of the human body. So, skeletal muscle. The skeletal muscle, also called the um, striated muscle. The specialized tissue that is attached to bones and allows movement. Together, skeletal muscles and bones are also called the mus musculus musculoskeletal system or also known as the locomotor system. Generally speaking, skeletal muscle is grouped into opposing pairs such as the biceps and the triceps on the front and back of the upper arm. Skeletal muscles are under our conscious control which is why they are also known as the voluntary muscles. So this is the example of the skeletal muscle. So the skeletal muscles enable human to move and perform daily activities. They play an essential role in respiratory mechanics and help in maintaining uh, posture and balance. They also protect the vital organs in the body. Next is the smooth muscle, located in various internal structures, including the digestive tract, uterus, and blood vessels such as arteries. Smooth muscles is arranged in layered sheets that contract in waves along the length of, length of the structures. So these are the smooth muscles. Okay, so smooth muscles is another term of other other term of the smooth muscle is involuntary muscles so if the skeletal muscle is voluntary muscles the smooth muscle is involuntary muscles because the motion of the smooth muscles happens without our conscious awareness uh, number three is cardiac muscle Cardiac muscles only exist in the heart. It contains cardiac muscle cells which perform highly coordinated actions that keep the heart pumping and blood circulating throughout the body. Okay, so unlike the skeletal muscle tissue such as that which is present in the arms and legs, the movements that cardiac muscle tissue produces are involuntary. This means that they are automatic and that a person cannot control them. So the cardiac muscle, the cardiac muscle, also known as heart muscle or myocardium. So that's why there is like cardiac arrest. If this happens, it will disrupt your heart's pumping action and stop um, blood flow to your body. And it's and if not treated uh, immediately, sudden cardiac arrest can lead to death. And that's the one uh, example of cardiac uh, muscles that uh, possibly happen. Okay, so, and that's it. Thank you for watching.